Welcome to another episode of the Giant Take Podcast. Chiefs win this one, 2017. We are tired. We are recording <laughs> this at 11.30 p.m. after the Giants. It was an absolutely disgusting game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but you know what? I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect that we're tired because you want to know why? This is a direct correlation to what we have been rooting for the Giants team our whole entire lives. Yeah, I get it. We're millennials. We're youngsters. We don't know shit about the team. We don't know what we're talking about. I get that. Gen Z, actually. Gen Z. We're Gen Z. Thank you. (laughs) But yeah, I, I know. We don't know about the, but, 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 you know, we don't know about the team, but here's the difference. You, per, you know, whoever is saying it was most likely older than us. You were able to witness the 2007 Super Bowl. You were able to remember the 2011 Super Bowl. I don't remember Jack about either of those Super Bowls. All I remember about my childhood is loss, 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 loss. <laughs> and it hasn't been any wins. One divisional, one, I mean, one wild card where we got absolutely blown out. And it's all been losses, and tonight is just another one of those to stack on to the rest. I'm Josh. I'm joined by my co-host, Alex. And like I said, we might be tired, but that's what we are with this team regardless. Whether it was now or it was tomorrow morning. We wanted to get it out early for you guys, so that's why we're here. I'm not even going to ask Alex. How are you? Alex, I'm going to ask a different question this time. This is probably the first time I've ever done this, maybe in giant take history. Alex, how disgusted are you with this team? On a scale of one. To ten. To John Mara. Mm. (laughs) I'm out of Dave Gettleman, okay? It's very upsetting right now. All I'm going to say is that I don't know how many hours. I'm not not going to do the math right now, but four o'clock tomorrow, there better be some damn moves. Because mm. this team needs to be flushed away and recreated in some way. I don't know who has to be flushed away, whether that's Joe Judge. I, You know, we're not even going to look at the damn press conference because I know what he's going to say. Got to look at the tape. We played for the full 60 minutes. Shut up, Joe Judge. Shut up. Dave Gettleman's just not going to be doing anything. Jackson Mahomes dancing on the sidelines. Like, this is just embarrassing. Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. Come on. They even had a little special cut, uh, area for him to do his TikTok dances, which is actually pretty funny, but obviously not that funny anymore. Was funny. Um, well, it's just the, the the area that's taped off on the sideline for what? It's his like, TikTok area, but anyway, yeah. who cares? It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just the penalties, the missed opportunities. Why did Billy Price slide? <laughs> Billy Price was once a Kansas City Chief. He gave Devontae Booker a hug. He decided to not block. He pulled a Nate Soldier. And Nate Soldier, of course, pulled a Nate Soldier, too, obviously. Mm -hmm. What's he going to do? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I texted, I don't know how many times I texted Josh this, maybe twice, two or three times. This is what happens when you don't put emphasis on the offensive line, and we saw it on that final drive, that Daniel Jones had .2 seconds to throw the ball, And then, of course, with our injuries, you know, we don't have our best wide receivers out there. But, hey, we still got guys who can make plays. But we don't got guys who can make plays in half a second. They might need a second or two seconds or three seconds. But we can't have that amount of time. I mean, there there was players who played admirably today. I thought Devontae Booker played very well today, despite how shocking the offensive line was. He found gaps somehow. You might have had to go underneath Billy Price's legs at some point. It was that there was that little gaps for him to run through. Everyone on offense was poor. I thought John Ross did decent today. But besides that, everyone else, it's just embarrassing. Sterling Shepard dropping passes. Darius Slayton dropping a pass. Evan Ingram with his usual butterfingers at the end was always a fun one to see. Not the greatest pass from Jones, but still, Mr. Butterfingers. Doesn't matter. It was a one-handed catch. It was completely outside of his range. I don't blame Ingram for that either. That's that's where you blame the offensive line, Alex. Daniel Offense. Jones had complete. That that last drive was awful. <laughs> awful. Absolute it, pressure from beginning to end of that drive. And it's just terrible. Like, I, I don't understand how... 
how that happens really it's just it's just really upsetting i don't I don't even know what to say. And then Jason Garrett knows our offensive line is terrible. So why is he not designing plays that help our offensive line? I get it. Let's do the up-tempo stuff, catch the defense off guard, get them tired, gives us an extra couple seconds in the pocket. Our offensive line could do that. But hey, at the end of the game, and what the hell is going on with our hurry-up? Why is our hurry-up slower than my computer is when it restarts from an update? That's how slow our offensive line was. And I just don't understand. Well, <laughs> I, go in our, I mean, our offense, not our offensive line. Our offensive line was slow, too. But you're looking at the guys. Matt Parrott didn't have a great night. But yeah, I don't know the exact pressure stats or whatever. We don't have that. We'll have that in the next episode, probably. Obviously, we're recording this like 20 minutes after the game ended. And, you know, Matt Parrott didn't play particularly well. Billy Price had a terrible game. I know he just stood out very bad. Hernandez had a very bad holding or a false start penalty that really kicked us in the ass at a certain point and Nate Solder was his usual self. I'm not going to expect him to be anywhere near average. It, it was just poor. And, and at lots of times we didn't even have tight ends blocking or Booker blocking. Like we need, you know, you know, our offensive line's shitty. We need some more guys in there, whether it's Rudolph, whether it's Evan Ingram, Butterfingers who also can't block. He just slips from the blocks. He had a couple blocks today where the, his man just like slipped right off his fingers very common. The ball and the opposing defensive linemen both do it to Evan Ingram. But Peyton Smith, why is he not in there more often? We're low on wide receivers. Why aren't we doing more three tight end sets here? We saw Kyle Rudolph get a couple of catches today where he was successful. Why is Evan Ingram not involved? It's just a lot of things that didn't go well. A lot of play calls that were just not good from Jason Garrett and just bad execution from the offensive line from everyone. And it was just really poor. You know, I, I don't really know what to say. And we could get to the defense later. But offensively, it was just not good enough against this very, very poor Chiefs defense. Don't get don't get me wrong. The Chiefs are a good team. They do not have a good defense. Our, our hurry-up offense, Alex, is probably slower than Rich Eisen running the 40-yard dash. Let's be honest here. And that man runs a slow 40-yard dash in our, our freaking... Our freaking... Um, Hurry up offense is slower than that. I want to get to the discipline. I do. Because you want to know what's funny? Like Alex was mentioning earlier, not so much we're going we to we're gonna do a competitive football game for 60 minutes. You know what we're also going to do? We're going to be really disciplined with our actions. We're going to show what we got, respectful of the game, all of that. I know the broadcast wanted to point out how many penalties that Chiefs offensive line gave up, right? They, they mentioned that in the broadcast. It wasn't just like the Giants didn't do anything bad on their end either. We had the O'Shane Zimenez people are now calling for his head, saying for him to be cut. Pat Leonard said, cut him now or whatever. He needs to be cut tomorrow. To be fair, he hasn't done anything, so why not? I mean, he's Quincy Rocher's outplaying him. Aziz Ojolari's outplaying him. Lorenzo Carter, who's done nothing, is outplaying him. Like, he, he, he can be gone tomorrow. I don't care. Darnay Holmes ends up with the interception on that play. That didn't count. We had a debatable, a soft-ass call. I mean, I'm sorry. I get that's a rule. I understand it. But <laughs> we have... Offensive superstars do that all the time. They're not getting flagged for it, but of course it's the fullback Elijah Penny. He happens to get flagged for that. Like, you're telling me Tyree Coles does the same exact thing in the guy's face. He gets a necessary reference? I didn't think so. So there's he, that. He, he doesn't do it right in front of the ref, though, which is one he thing. He didn't do it right in front of the ref. It was because he did it in front of the player's face. That's why, I got yeah, the, I know. that's why I got the call for it. Well, the ref also saw it, which was also the problem. <laughs> what happened in the Super Bowl, Alex? With the Antoine, well, the rule wasn't intact then, right? They weren't like mm. doing that, whatever. Okay. But anyway. Okay. And also, Adoree Jackson had a couple dropped interceptions. James Bradbury had a dropped interception. Adoree Jackson, I believe, had two dropped interceptions. There was that deep ball to Tyreek Hill. It literally went through his fingertips. I could have caught that. I wouldn't have been able to keep up with Tyreek Hill, but if I was there, like standing still, I would have caught that. So much for a special teams genius, by the way. Kadarius Tony, the ball went right through his hands. Luckily, we got it back on the muff. It was Pettis, I think. Because remember, Pettis like hurt his hand and they had to leave. Nah, maybe it was Pettis, but like <laughs> whatever it was, I'm sorry. Just are we uh, special teams genius? The, the special teams goddamn coach. That's who we hired as our head coach, 
and we don't even know how to catch balls now off of punts. You know what else pisses me off is I don't know what this is, but when players, like when there's a kickoff, right? The kickoff after a point score, beginning of the half, whatever. Why, you know, ever since they moved it up from the 20 to the 25 for if it just hands, uh, so you take a knee in the end zone or whatever. I don't know why anyone would possibly be returning anything that's not, that's in the end zone. Like if it's in the edge of the end zone, let it bounce. Like get us to the, get us to the damn 25. We don't need you running it out, possibly fumbling it. Especially when we have our like, seventh string returner out there in like Darnay Holmes returning. Why does he feel the need to come out who probably got zero reps in practice returning, by the way? Why does he feel the need to do that when the ball is in the end zone already? Just let it bounce. Just let it go through the end zone. I don't understand it. And then he gets to the the 16 yard line or whatever. You just lost us nine yards. And you can see this offense is struggling. We could take every damn yard we can get. Need every yard. <laughs> Can't they like can't do that? And why is Joe Judge not going his ear? If it's in the if it comes remotely close to the end zone, you let it bounce. Like what? Like so many frustrating things that I I don't get why are not being addressed. And the damn timeouts too. I can't stand the damn timeouts. The goddamn timeouts that cost us this game, Alex. We had no timeouts with a minute left in this game. You want to know why? Because with three twenty four, I think that's what it was left in the fourth quarter. Joe Judge was like, yeah. This, this is the time right here. Let's, let's, let's burn one of them. What are we doing? And, and, and he lets those 30 seconds, those crucial 30 seconds, because that two minute warning, if it goes right, goes in your favor. And that's a timeout. Yet we let it go down to the two minute warning, leaving, leaving us a minute, 15 seconds on that clock. We take a timeout there. We have 2.30 left. We make a stop. It goes to the two-minute warning. They got to kick the field goal or run one more play after that. I think they had to kick the field goal. We would have had 30 more seconds on the clock if we did the exact same thing but use that timeout instead of using it after. Why are we using the timeout after the two-minute warning? What logic is that? Because you're leaving no timeouts left to the Giants when they get the ball anyway. There's no point. And especially even worse, I think, was the first half ones when we could have, if we had those few timeouts, we could have gotten those three points at the end of that half. Don't even, Alex. Don't. And then guess what? It would be a tie game. Those don't. were worse, in my opinion, because at least Joe Judge was using them to stop the clock in the second half of the game. In the first half of the game, it was just because we weren't set. He used one on first and 10 around our own 40-yard line on defense. Let them get the damn five yards. Let them get the five yards on the on the, on the on the whatever it's called, whatever the penalty. Offsides? Offsides. Or wait, no, it was delay of game on offense. Oh. Yeah, make it first and 15. Oh, delay of game? Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're not going to get it anyway. <laughs> just, just We're scripting ball. delay of games now? What are we doing as a team? <laughs> we don't have enough time. We luckily get an, a break. We got two breaks on that drive. I'm looking at the stats right now, Alex. It was the first and 10 at the New York Giants, 37, and incomplete passes for selling Shepard. He was actually injured on that play. Oh, a penalty for defensive pass interference. All right, let's move it up. We're at the 45. Oh, false start. Let's move it back. Daniel Jones, scramble, right, two yards, penalty. Nate Soldier, offensive holding. Okay, great. Got a first and 25 now. Booker up the middle for 14 yards. All right, we got a second 11 at the 44. Good job by Booker getting out of bounds. Let's see what we can do, right? Let's try to go Hail Mary, right? No. Actually, let's do like a designed delay of game so then we can take it and kneel it for no reason. For no reason. Do it, Daniel Jones, Hail Mary. Are we, is Joe Judge in his ear and Daniel Jones is like, yeah, no, I don't want an interception going against my stat line. Uh, I, I don't want this happening. I don't want, like, what are we, why not even take the chance? There, I mean, unless, like, you're really worried they're going to pick it and then run it all the way back. Is that in your scheme going into this game, Joe Judge? Why are we not even trying the Hail Mary? Why are we taking a delay of game just to kneel it down? I don't understand that whatsoever whatsoever i don't get it at all i don't understand that oh my god <laughs> this team alex this goddamn team oh it's just painful and i i i don't know what to say I mean, there's, there's another therapy <laughs> session happening on twitter right now and i don't <laughs> it's 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 just funny at this point it really is and you know what else is funny 
is here here let's let's step away from the game for a second right let's let's talk about what actually matters at this point which is the trade deadline right coming up tomorrow i know people are calling for slayton to be traded right just want to bring this up just need a break from talking about this agonizing game for a second i know people want slayton to be traded and i'm wondering like what value do you think we'd get that makes it worth trading him, right? Obviously, we picked him with a fifth-round pick. It's not often you get a fifth-round pick who can start. I get that he's had a couple struggles with drops this year, but in the past, he's been a big player for us. And even this season, he's made a couple very big catches for us. Not that they amounted to anything, but if our team was better, they might have amounted to something. And I don't really think any team's going to give up the value that we'd want for him. like. At that point, I think you'd want at least a third-round pick for it to be any bit valuable, and I don't think any team is giving up a third-round pick for Darius Slayton, if we're being completely honest. Maybe a fourth-round pick. But if we're getting a fifth-round pick, you're just taking another shot on a late-rounder who might not hit, and we hit on Darius Slayton, right? You know, even even if he, you know, stops playing football at this point, we already, we still hit. We still got a player who was very functional and very productive for us and is continuing to be productive with some issues, but is still a productive player. I don't think he's one of those guys that you trade. But to be honest, I don't know who the hell you trade at this point. Who who can the Evan Giants Ingram trade? Stock. Evan Ingram stock just went way up here with that one touchdown, man. You don't even understand. No, Evan kidding. Ingram is is there's no point of trading him for a sixth or seventh round pick. There's just yeah. nothing like you might as there, well just write out his contract at this point. We might point. as well just write his contract, get a comp pick, right? Same thing with Jabril Peppers. I don't think you're going to get a, a pick for him, and we probably want him to stay. Who who else are you going to trade? I mean, <laughs> there's no one else. Sterling Shepard, maybe? Who wants that contract? Who wants his injury issues? No one wants that, right? The only person who's barely interested or interesting for any other teams is probably Darius Slayton. Get rid of him if you, if they've, you know, if you get a third or above, but I mean, I don't know what else you'd, I don't know what else you do. We kind of tied ourselves up with a lot of these contracts that teams are looking at. Like, Hey, we don't want this Adoree Jackson contract. We don't want this uh, James Bradbury contract. We don't want this Kyle Rudolph contract. We don't want this Sterling Shepard contract, right? We don't want this Kenny Galladay contract. No one in the world wants that Kenny Galladay contract. My God. You know, we're we're in a lot of trouble here. And I don't think, you know, I see Giants fans like I'm looking at my Twitter timeline right now. Trade, trade. We better get something. What are we going to do? Like, Josh, what, like, do you think, like, what are we going to do? No, there's no one on our team that's any bit valuable to anybody. Listen, like I told you, Alex, it was it was a joke. If there's any way you do happen somehow to have a team stupid enough to offer a fifth round or lower for Evan Ingram. I know it's not the case. Then you, you snag on that. Besides that, no one. Like like you said, there is literally no one. But I would like to go back to this game. Just go through uh, the stat lines and the actual few positives that I would like to touch on um, in this matchup because there were some. Here's one. Don't even need to really look at the stats that much. We held this Kansas City Chiefs explosive offense to 20 points. And that's a positive right off the bat. This Patrick Graham defense deserved the win. Patrick Graham called the great defensive scheme. James Bradbury had locked down coverage. I know the drop balls. It sucks. It does. But listen, we got some strips on Patrick Mahomes. We had Leonard Williams get a strip. Yes, I know he should have picked that up, but he was he was focused on the quarterback there. Um we had a doink inter- interception off of the helmet of a wide receiver. Honestly, feel bad for Patrick Mahomes on that one. It's kind of been his receiver's fault more than him on most of these picks this season, but whatever, we'll take it. This defense deserved the win, man. This defense stopped the Chiefs from getting seven or six, and then if they got the extra point seven, they stopped, it. They stopped the Chiefs from getting six, held them to three, gave our offense a chance, to go down there, have Graham Gano do what he's done all season and last season, be consistent and nail a field goal. That's it. That's it. They did that. They did their job. They led them the three. Obviously, they got them, you know, but it's Patrick Mahomes. What do you expect? We expected him to drive down and win the game. We expected him to get six. So the defense really did what they needed to do, and it still didn't work. I'll run through this real quick. 
Booker, I thought, had a pretty good game rushing. Stepping in for Saquon Barkley once again, 15 carries for 60, 60 yards. Oh, my God. This is what Joe Judge said. I know I said we're not going to get into the press conferences, right? But you know we love those uh, amazing timeouts, right, Josh? You want to know Joe Judge's response for that? Joe Judge said the Giants have been having headset issues all season, which is why they've burned a lot of timeouts at inopportune times. Said he's contacted league. They better get it fixed fast. So you're telling me it's some broken headphones? That's the problem? And that this can't get fixed? We're not in 1972. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, he's Now he's getting to the point where he's blaming stuff, Alex. I think we've, we've seen kind of the demise of Joe Judge here, honestly. I know it's kind of funny, but right, he said the same you know, BS over and over again in these press conferences, and now he's he's blaming, like, other stuff. I think we're seeing it go way downhill. I, th- I think I think we are. I mean, we're seeing it live in front of our faces with this press conference right here. He also said about O'Shane Zimenez's penalty that ne- uh, negated the interception. We just can't have penalties like that. Hey, Joe. No, I think we should keep the penalties, Joe. No, no, no. I think maybe we should do a couple more. Excuse me. Listen here, JJ, okay? Mr. Judge. Really? 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 We just can't have penalties like that. What, have I heard that before? I feel like this is a recurring issue. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. It could just be me. But anyway, back to the, uh, back to the stat <laughs> line. I'm sorry. I have to read this. Danny King, who's come on to the podcast a couple of... <laughs> Couple of times. He said, LMAO, no, I'm calling it a night after reading this. Ain't no way this is the reason they're going with. How would it take this long? Because this has been going on this entire season, and it happened last season, too. Oh, like, not as bad, season. but oh my, like, I, this, this is just, this is just a joke. Well, then, since if we're just, we're using people who come on this podcast tweets, I thought Bobby also had a good one. Bobby Skinner said, uh, Giants brought back Jason Garrett after ranking 31st in the offense in 2020. They've gone 24 games without scoring 30 points as an offense. One game he deserved praise was last week when they had three points at halftime and the defense bailed. Please fire him. He'll never be an advantage. <laughs> Joe Judge is an action figure that comes equipped with five lines in response to the we just can't have penalties like that line. <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh. Otherwise, it's just it's just pain, you know? Just headsets. Pain. Headsets. Headsets. It's the headsets. It's the headsets, okay? They can't get a pair of Apple earbuds or some Sony headsets. Yeah, he's, got, he's gotta get the AirPods. No. We, no. Need the, we need the noise cancellation <laughs> on that sideline. See if you they're, can pick him up with that. They're using a typewriter right now to actually communicate messages to take Crowder on defense. That's why they have to take the time it's out. Cause it's because it's the old school mentality, Alex. <laughs> See, that was ju- Judge. He uses he uses back in the day stuff. That's why he's he's using the telegraph right now, and he can't and and Tate Crowder can't hear the beats. He can't translate it. And they're like, time out. He can't do this no but more. Anyway, but anyway, let me get back to the stat line. We don't get too ahead of ourselves here. Uh, like Alex was saying. We're, we're even down more wide receivers. Luckily, Kadarius Tony did come back. Sterling Shepard did get injured once again. Devontae Booker also had five catches for 65 yards. That's what I was saying, receiving-wise. So that was a good game for him. Midori Jackson and the most tackles. Uh, Logan Ryan was in there with tackles. Xavier McKinney had a few. Um, that's basically it. But I, I would like to say this. Here's, here's the most impressive thing. We held Travis Kelsey to four catches for 27 yards. At one point in this game, Travis Kelsey only had seven yards. Maybe in the first half, he only had seven yards. Great job by the Giants. He was my X factor, obviously, because we cannot cover tight ends. And I think it was James Bradbury who was on it for most of the game. You know, I haven't, I haven't checked the tape yet. Uh, I, I might have to look over that in film. But anyway, uh, that's a Joe Judge reference for anyone who doesn't know. But um, yeah. I would say that we did a pretty good job locking him down. Here's Joe Judge once again. We're just getting the tweets fizzled in here, you know, fizzling in as as we go on. 
Joe Judge asked about using the timeouts early in the first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix fast. Okay, we got that. Jordan, Jordan, Ron, on. Uh, just tweeted that out again. But don't worry, guys. They're getting it fixed. So mention that next on. next week we might struggle with the timeouts. We might have to take a couple more because you know it's not working out. But don't worry. After the bye week, it'll be all good. Okay, we'll just be two and seven by then. But it'll be fine then. So don't worry. Judge got it under control. <laughs> He didn't specify it was the league or not. That's fun. League or just the Giants, like, staff. That's well, I don't see any other teams calling timeouts on first and 10 for no reason whatsoever. Mm. Did you see the Chiefs doing that? Did you see the Patriots doing that? You see the Chargers doing that? You see the Cowboys doing that? Do you see any team in existence? Our local high school team doesn't even have to call a timeout <laughs> when they're not organized. Seriously? I just run the play. But, um, yeah, I guess, I guess Alex... I, I really don't have any more thoughts in this game besides one more thing. That face mask. That 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 quote unquote face mask penalty on Travis Kelsey where Tay Crowder ripped the ball, grabbed the ball, and they called it a face mask penalty. I know there's nothing we could do about that to like kind of help that situation. There's nothing they could do. But what a missed call by the refs. What a missed call by the refs. Again, against the Giants' favor in this game today, Elijah Penny with the call there, and and that just absolutely fake face mask call kind of drew the edge. And after that, I saw I saw Twitter saying, all right, we lost this game today. You knew kind of after that, Chiefs were driving down, they get that penalty on their side. It's kind of over. I, I, you know, to be honest, this headphones thing, I mean, we're going to have to hear it in person, but this, like, this just is the icing on the cake. Yeah. This is the icing on the cake. But going back to the face mask, I mean, yeah, was it not a face mask? Yeah. But there's tons of calls that go against teams every day, oh. and you just got to play. You just got to play. I got it for you, by the way. Um, oh, great. I, do you want to try to insert it through Riverside, or do you want me to just play it out of my mic? Just play it out of your mic. You're good. It's too much editing for Midnight. <laughs> yeah, seriously, happy uh, happy losing Tuesday. I hope you I hope you have everyone has yeah, a happy, happy losing day. Tuesday. Well, actually, the podcast will be coming out right now. Actually, I don't even have to schedule it or anything. It's perfect. Yeah, because we usually well, like to release it for the next day. Yeah, when we finish, I'm already excited because I'm tired and exhausted. All right, well, we're not done here, Alex. We are not done. I still though. have more thoughts. Yeah, not do. saying we're doing an hour episode, but uh, <laughs> so we're not doing... so going to one a.m. We don't we have should. school tomorrow, so it's all good. All good. Don't have school tomorrow. Oh, that is. Uh, thing. I'll definitely be able to sleep in. It's it's not loading currently, but I'll I'll make sure to uh, circle back to it when I do get the chance. If Alex, you want to try and pull it up on your phone or on is your, it is it on Twitter? It is on CBS Sports HQ uh, Twitter's account from four minutes ago, I believe. So if you can pull that up, try and incorporate it through Riverside. I know we were having some audio troubles. If you do right, try we'll it through try Riverside, it. I know there's right. like a thing you have to you kind of have to like put it in as a joint. All right, we're going we're gonna to try. You're not going to – here, here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna play it here. Let's – all right, we're going to try it. We're going to try it. Does Sorry. this loss change anything for the Giants heading into the trade deadline? Joe Judge, no. All right, let's see. Jordan, I don't have the exact answer. Wait, 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 wait. That wait. It sounds good, by the way. So hopefully – You can hear it? You can hear it? I heard it pretty good from that little clip. So, yeah, let's make a full screen, though, for everyone yep, watching. Yeah, that would Every single stadium this year, home and away, I've had issues personally. Look, I, I don't know. Look, I, I don't want to make this all about headsets. We have things. I'd say this. Whoever's in charge of it, whoever the guys who – look, Jordan, I don't know the exact answer. I don't know if that comes more through the league or us exactly, but they better fix it. Oh, he it. doesn't know. That's great. That's it. That's, uh, look, I'll get you all the details and stuff later on who does all that stuff. You know, we get the communication back. We say, hey, listen, these things have been an issue, and then we get told they've adjusted this, they've done this, they've done this, whatever it is. Like, like I said, we try to adjust and use different hardware. Hasn't been allowed, so we'll keep on moving on. Again, look, I don't want to make this about the stupid headsets. That's not what this is about. Yeah, I mean that wasn't the factor in the game. We got to do other things on our own to make sure we have success. But every. All right, so there you go. I, I by the way, I'm very proud of that because like that actually right. sounded really good. Let's that... see how it works. Let's not get too excited oh, yeah, before true. we don't. Well, know. Maybe it was just a soundboard. Yeah. Because right? we did the soundboard, and that's just like an added clip. But I remember last time you added like a video, it didn't sound. All right, but, so perfect. All right, hopefully, just, hopefully it worked. So we'll see. I really, I really thought that uh, Steve Spags, 
Steve Spagnolo, the uh, defensive coordinator of the Chiefs, is going to like help us out, kind of give the Giants what what they gave him, and that was uh, kicking in the ass, <laughs> basically what the Giants did. And I mean, they they did. We all we all thought this was a high scoring game, though, which is pretty funny. We we thought it was going to be a high scoring game, and it just wasn't. It was once again. Um, it was once. You should again. know better. We, we should, should know, know better. better. When Jason Garrett is involved, there's no high-scoring affair, okay? <laughs> Especially when next to the Giants logo, there's there's never a high score there. <laughs> Especially when Jason Garrett's here. Yeah. Oh, my God. We keep on talking about this. But you know what? The, the, I mean, that's what this podcast is. So, I mean, he seriously blames headsets for his time. We literally – we can't get over this right now. Like, we're, I know, like it's, but, it's I mean, that it's, bad. It's true. I mean – it's not like we're harping because we are, but it's like, that's, you know, we're a giant's podcast. It's, I mean, like, so you're telling, like, he's blaming headsets for him calling time out. Joe judge. If this loss affects anything for the giants going into deadline day. Yeah. I No. <laughs> yeah. I read that. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Job. I, I read that. Tra- let's trade judge. If we can, is there any way we could ship <laughs> well, him off to another thing? Even- room? <laughs> we wouldn't even get a, a, we we'd have to give our another team a first round pick for <laughs> for us to do that. Right. Yes, yeah, seriously. Oh right, my Alex. god. So I think we're good. We're done with the game, right? So no once again, <laughs> final <over. laughs> twenty seventeen. But we're not done with this episode. So what I want to ask you now is, uh, we actually, t- I mean, funny enough, talked about this on the preview with Mike Too Nice. You know, we were kind of rating the giant system. But my, my question is right now, one person, everyone else states there's one person you fire on the shine staff. The person you fire is one person. One. It's gotta be one person. That's tough. Cause I, I don't, my answer is locked and loaded as I'm sure you know who it is. I'm sure you'd say Joe judge. Mm-hmm. I- I'm not really a reactionary type of guy off of one game. I know it seems like I am just a uh, little bit not, of the, not a little bit game. of the blood. Fl- I know. I know. Um, a little bit of the blood flowing. I'm not even like a one season type of person, but this is a season and a half at this point. And you know, it, you know, very bad eight games and the just intentions and mis mismanagement of certain moves is just not there. It's gotta be Dave Gettleman. Because Dave Gettleman hires the coach. He decides who stays, who goes. It's got to be Dave Gettleman who has to go. Ideally, it's John Mara, but Dave Gettleman. <laughs> Dave Gettleman. Yeah, I know you've been on Gettleman ever since he made kind of the Saquon pick. It's not about Gettleman personally. It's the fact that Ev- Gettleman has control of everything underneath. So if we want everything underneath to change, then Gettleman has to go. And really, we want everything under Mara to change. We want everything to change. Really, ideally, John Mara is booted out. He sells the team, and we get like I don't even know someone to buy the team <laughs> that so, cares and knows what they're doing and isn't impatient. When it comes to my pick, it is head coach Joe Judge. The man hasn't shown what it takes to be to be to be. I mean, it, it was a risky pick in the first place. And once again, the speech, the intro speech kind of stepped in, gave everyone an, a look into this guy's a disciplinary guy. He's under Belichick. A lot of coaches haven't done well under Belichick. Maybe he can change that. And up to this point, it has not been that. And it, Alex, it honestly is just the the same excuses. And now he's adding He's adding more excuses, though. It wasn't well. Actually, he wasn't. He wasn't saying excuses, right? He was just repeating the same thing over and over again. We got to practice this. We got to play sixty minutes. We're undisciplined. We're going to be more disciplined. We're going to learn from our mistakes. But all those things they haven't done because there's been penalties against the Giants that have been costly, costly penalties that have ruined games. We got to become dis. Well, we're not disciplined because we would have won this game if Darnay Holmes made an interception. But nope. We got a player jump off sides. Zimenez jumped off sides. And also think about this. I don't know. We didn't even mention this on the special teams front, right? This is Joe Judge, master special teams, special teams god, Joe Judge, special teams. I don't know how many more times I need to say it. Riley Dixon is getting paid quite a bit of money to punt for this football team. And when you shank punts in important moments like that final drive where he shanked that punt badly, and they got it on their 30 instead of probably where it should have been, closer to the 10. 
those kinds of yards matter in that type of situation. And the, you can't have people, you can't have your punter making mistakes like that either. Everyone is just choking at a, at a very fast rate <laughs> on this team. And it, it just needs to stop. And, and another person, Riley Dixon, just another person who probably has to go. A punter is a very replaceable position, and he just hasn't been consistent enough. He's got to go. Um, and, and we had Daniel Jones, I guess, just talk after this. Nothing too crazy because I think we would have gotten if there was anything, you know, any big quotes that he said. But I want to get to what his main uh, point. And Kadarius Tony is up on the podium now, which can only yeah, bring good like, things. Yeah, you like the hairs with the, the hair sticking out of the hat. So basically, I do. when it comes to Joe Judge, now Daniel Jones, the common theme is that they made too many mistakes, including, including Jones's interception. Well, I mean... Alex, we, we get a tip interception and immediately, and I mean first play immediately, throw that right away. Right? It was the first it was first down. First down, Jones threw that pick. There wasn't even a second down on that first drive. First Giants drive, I, I believe, I mean I'll I'll pull it up. I had the ESPN thing in front of me. I wanna say first drive, Daniel Jones threw that interception. Crazy. Crazy. Besides that, I thought he had a solid game, but I mean, he can't make mistakes like that. But also, you second know, down. Yeah, second down. There was a run, and then I believe it was thrown. Yep. But I don't. I I don't think Daniel Jones is necessarily the problem. But I mean, at this point, I this is the other problem, right? I see tons of Giants fans online right now. And I'm I'm scrolling through Twitter, right? Because I've you know I'm recording. Pat I'm like, Leonard I'm... is throwing out some takes, man. He Pat, said Pat Joe, Le- Joe Judge opted not to take his frustration out on his own team. Instead, he ranted about headsets not working during the game this season. Said whoever's job it is needs to figure it out. Cost Giants two first half timeouts. Judge. Well, here's what I would say. I see people. We need to rebuild this team. Fire Ooh. everyone. Start the rebuild. Fire everyone. Start the rebuild. Etc. We can't. Because guess what? We're in cap hell. <laughs> <laughs> James Bradbury, his contract is backloaded to the moon. Leonard Williams, the same. Adore Jackson, the same. Blake Martinez, I don't know exactly what his contract situation is, but he's still getting a decent amount of money. Kenny Galladay. Oh, well, is his contract nicely loaded backwards? We can't rebuild. Because all these contracts, whether you, I don't know what you do, do you take the cap hit? I, it's just, there's, there's a lot of things to figure out. And it's not as simple as pressing the, the, the restart button on this team, because it's, it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of a comparison, but there really isn't one. You just like, you're pressing the restart button, but you're also sliding back to the bottom. It's like you're sinking below the ground. It's not just, you're starting back from the bottom. You're not at the top of the tower. We certainly aren't at the top of the tower. We're right back at the bottom, but we're, we've dug ourselves a hole, too, with this whole cap situation. So it's going to be a big ask for whoever comes in here because Dave Gettleman's not staying, right? Dave Gettleman's gone. Joe Judge, I don't know yet, might be gone. Probably a decent chance he's gone. But whoever comes in here needs to know what they're doing with, with that cap situation. They have to make firm choices and big choices that are, you know, going to be important, whether they decide to go win now or whether they really understand that, hey, this team needs to rebuild properly. And because how much we spent in free agency, we're not going to be able to rebuild quickly. And that's going to be a problem. Yeah, and listen, we're coming up on the 40-minute mark, Alex. I agree with you. Uh, I think it is time we should start wrapping it up. Funny enough, our latest and longest, most likely, recap episode of the season. I don't think we've come up to a 40 minute mark on a recap. Maybe we have, but um, I think it's funny. I guess just some last noted things here before we get this done with, because uh, by the time this come out, obviously ca- comes out, uh, the press conferences will most likely be all released, but just the updated information with Kadarius Tony, similar to what we saw this weekend with Matt Ryan, obviously not as bloody though. Uh, Kadarius Tony said that his thumb got stepped on. Uh, he doesn't have anything on his hand right now and doesn't seem like it's anything serious, so that's a good thing. Kadarius Tony on people like Randy Moss knowing who he is. 
Thank God, I'm kind of getting used to it now. I'm just giving you updates on the press conferences, honestly, at this point. Well, I mean, that's... Oh, my God, I just saw the funniest meme now. The Gi- the Giants' headsets weren't working in KC because Patrick Mahomes was taking off all the stadium bandwidth. <laughs> all right, uh, continue. Sorry. No, and then he also said his ankle was fine and didn't limit it at all. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care, honestly. So, with that, we thank you for listening to this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please drop a like. If you are, um, you know, and depressed, got some comments for us, got some comments on this team that you want us, questions you want us to talk about in the next episode, whatever, comment that. Because we're depressed with you, we're upset with you, we're pissed with you, we're with you. We're with you as Giants fans, because we are Giants fans, and we stick together as one. Um, if you're listening, please subscribe. We're at the Giant Take Pod everywhere, basically. Um, Alex at Anorin23, I'm at Josh Hello 29 And listen, we still go. We still, we still contribute, we still make podcasts. We got an episode coming out later this week. Got a game on Sunday. Uh against the Raiders and it's hard work in football. It's football. That's what it is. The team, they're first in the, the, their division in the AFC West, right? So five and two opposite of what we are basically. And, uh, or no, they had their bye. So yeah, th- that's where we are right now. And we're sitting, we're we sitting last now. Yeah. Yeah. Two and six last in the NFC East. So, Alex, I'm just going to close it out for you. I'm gonna want, I want to give you time to edit, and we both want to go to bed. So, um, for Alex, Josh saying thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time on another episode of the Giant Take Podcast. Peace.